Hey, this is the Mad Scientist Guy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a current limiting circuit based out of two transistors and two resistors so that I can drive an LED from a battery. And the purpose of this is that I want to create my own red LED headlight that just goes on and off really simple and easy so that I can see my telescope at night. So here's a typical headlight and this one is basically how almost all of them are, are built and they have a switch on the side and then you, you can pick your color. This particular one is green. But the way this works is you turn it on and then that's low and then you again and then that's high and then it's really high and then it blinks. That means that if you want to turn it on to where you want, say if you're going to use your telescope at night, one, well now you have to click through about four times to shut it off. And this is really annoying. And so I don't want that. And so what I want to do is one thing I want red. And I want to just turn it on. Just turn it on and turn it off and be done with it. And so what I'm going to do this is part one where I'm going to 3D print uh, a connection here and then put a board on with my own light. So I'll just use this bottom part right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. And this is a, an, a red LED. I already have it mounted on its board. And then I'm going to throttle this down so that it is just bright enough that it works at night. And you turn it on, it goes on, and you turn it off, and it goes off, and that's the end of it. And so this will be the first video, because I need to work out the circuit of how to control this LED. And the way I'm going to do it, here's the breadboard, is, is like this. I'm going to use a single battery with an on-off switch, and then eventually I will do variable. But for version 1, I'm simply going to work out the resistors, and I'm going to limit the current. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. Well, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to use a circuit from uh, Bill O'Donnell. And this is where I found him over on the University of Las Vegas. And then he published a simple circuit, uh, current limiting, just using two transistors and two resistors. Very, very simple. And that's uh, going to work well for me. So basically, we have an NPN transistor here and another one here. And this is how we connect them. You've got the load, power supply, and then they have an, he has a separate source going into here, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the 12 volt here and also tie it to here. So my calculations are gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna have slightly different currents than his, but that's okay because we can work it out. And then you calculate, he shows you the calculations here. And then we can calculate the limiting current. Basically, the limiting current is right here through this second transistor. So I'm going to go over that next. And uh, by the way, I'll just put a link to this and then you can just download this PDF if you wanna build your own. Uh, so let's take a look at the board, how I built it, and then we'll do this calculation. Here's the circuit that I have built, and it's got the two resistors. This is T1, and down here is T2. And we're going to limit the current based on this resistor right here, and that uh, goes into the base of T2. And so uh, here is a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. This is 3.2 volts. I need about two volts across this LED and so 3.2 is a little high, but I'm going to limit the current. And so I've uh, salvaged this from a previous project that I did. Now if we take a test lead from the positive to the positive on the LED, and then we run the, other, the negative side of the LED through here, this goes into the first transistor. All right now that is much dimmer than it has the potential to do because 
under uh, commercially available constant current at full power that this can accept. It is so bright that you, uh, it's just blinding even in the daytime and we just can't do that at night. This has to be severely throttled down so that one thing it won't burn out the LED and also I just need enough to be able to see my telescope and the dials and the knobs. I do not want to read a book or do anything else and so I'm going to limit it this way. So voltage is equal to IR and the resistance will going to be voltage divided by the current. Now we can limit the current across that second transistor. So if we have a voltage drop of 0 0.7 volts And we want to limit this to about 60 milliamps, which is going to be 0 0.06. If we calculate this, that's going to be 11.6 ohms. Okay, so that's why I had 11 ohms to begin with. But when I turned it on, it was really bright even in the daytime and it was hurting my eyes. So I want to take this down to about, I would say, uh, 10 milliamps. So what we're going to do is we have, we'll do a new calculation and we we'll say that resistance is equal to 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.01. And that will equal 70 ohms. All right, so let's go and I'm going to test 70 ohms and I'm going to try it in my pantry, which is just pitch black when I close the door and see how bright it is. Okay, let's measure the current and this is going to be with the uh, slightly larger resistor and we're calculating this should be approximately 10 milliamps is what we're looking for. So if we put the positive on the battery, all right, and then we'll put the other side of the lead on the positive of this LED, right here like this. Gets a little tricky. And then this one goes into the transistor. And let's put that on the negative. We have 6.7 milliamps, so about 7 milliamps, so pretty close to our design target. Certainly within tolerances for this type of application. Okay, I'm going into my pantry and I'm going to close the door and try and do this in the dark and see if this lower one is light enough to see. Okay, so I think so that's I... about right. It isn't so bright that it's going to be bothering a bunch of other people, but it's bright enough that I'll be able to see my telescope. And I, I may want to tune this down a little bit later, maybe even make it lower, but that'll have to be after a, an actual field test with my telescope. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode where I'll go over how to build this with a 3D printed part and a custom board.